Hey everybody, I am going to be showing you how to build a matchstick house. About two years ago I posted up a video of a finished house I had built, and ever since then I've been getting a lot of questions about it, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys how to, to actually build one yourself. Uh, this will be a two-story double-decker porch house that I found on DeviantArt. They had some photos of an abandoned house and I really liked it, and so I figured I would go ahead and build that one. Uh, I will put some links in the description to that, uh, to the photos, and you can see what I'm going to be working with, what this will turn out to be. But keep in mind that I have made some little alterations to it, and I think it'll turn out nice. So your first step is to actually find some photo references of a house. Maybe you have a house in the neighborhood that you like, and you would like to duplicate or just work off of. Maybe sketch up some drawings of your of your own, and that's pretty much just the first step. So let's get to going and I'm going to show you um, catch you up to, to where I built now and then from there I'm just going to show you step by step as I build the rest of the house uh, and my progress so hopefully this turns out alright I won't be able to show you how to do this all in one video but uh, hopefully I can make a nice little uh, series out of this so let's get at it alright so now that you have your house design done up you're going to need some matches I've chosen diamond um, I really love these matches. They're all made in America, so they're, you know, good quality. Very few imperfections, such as, like, bent matches and what have you. They're all pretty good. A box this size at Walmart is 92 cents. I also have some small box matches that are green light, which are all recycled for a different size. And then I have matchbooks that are also diamond green light. And those will be, like, shingles or something. But... Yeah, they're all pretty cheap. A dollar, maybe, maybe dollar fifty. Um, we're gonna be starting with the door, the front door. The reason I'm doing this is all doors are pretty much roughly a, a universal size, eight foot tall by four foot wide. Also, what we're gonna be doing is, um, well, the reason that's relevant is it's a one to two ratio, which is really easy to figure out without using measurements, and uh, you can roughly base the rest of the house on that. But the reason we're going to start with a door and then we're going to build around it instead of a foundation is it you can't really line it up perfectly when putting it together. And that gives the uh, illusion that the house's foundation is shifted and it's just an older house. And it's a pretty easy look to achieve this way. So what we're going to do is I just took 10 matches and laid them down and traced it on a piece of cardboard and then cut that out. Took a second layer of cardboard and then cut these designs into it and then glued it back on here and I just kept reference of what each cut was for kind of like a template so if you don't have this uh, you don't really need it I just went ahead and did it to make it quicker for building this matchstick house sorry I gotta find which box of these has my burnt matches so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and get some of these out here and I just lay these on here kind of to get the idea. Put these on the end for the width. And then I'm going to take one of these. And I'm just going to roughly lay it in between here. And I don't have any pencils out here. Normally you would just mark it. I'll just go ahead and make a, a quick cut on it. And I'm not going to use any measurements. I'm going to do it all by eye so that they don't align properly. And again, that gives that the shifting foundation kind of look. See here, i got to find my cut again. Always use caution when cutting these matches. Because I wasn't the other day and I took a pretty good chunk out of my finger. But I have a very dull exacto knife. So it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do when we cut this match is we're just going to make that small incision and then work our way around. <clears throat> now you don't have to cut all the way through the match, but just make sure that when you break it apart that you've scored it pretty well because otherwise it's going to uh, split the match and it's going to take down and rip a good chunk out of the wood and you don't want that. So oh, I then scooted my chair and made a squeak. And we're just going to glue it all down to this piece of paper. And what that does is it saves on um, drying time. And you're able to work while it's still wet. Otherwise, um, you're taking and you're just holding the matches together. 
and I've done that for that original house I have posted up and let me tell you it it takes a really long time to do that I'm going to be using some uh, wood glue here I'm not particular to any brand just keep in mind that this is waterproof and when it's waterproof um, it can make it hard to paint some of the matches like here and uh, on the floor there but sometimes it gives it a nice effect like uh, certain parts of the woods worn in different areas so just keep that in mind when using it or you can use some Elmer's wood glue that is clear uh, this won't hold up as good a bond with the matches and the house won't last as long it'll be a little bit more rickety you can also use a, a, a hot glue gun but just keep in mind that's going to deteriorate very fast and the house is going to fall apart in about uh, a couple gears because that, that hot glue just does not last so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down to the paper and again I'm not going to uh, well not again but I'm not going to, to put it all together at once I'm going to do this in small segments working down that too is going to show uh, a little bit of ricketiness because if I do it this way there's a chance the uh, the bottom of the door is not going to line up with the top of the door and it helps with the overall look so when you put this down, you're going to want to push down and then in towards the other matches to kind of give it a nice uh, bond to each other. Otherwise, when you cut this back out, the whole structure is just going to be glued to the paper and not itself. And it'll be pretty flimsy. But what I do in that case is I take uh, some cardboard and I just glue it to the back there. Makes it a lot easier. So I've already cut this one once, so I'm going to reuse it again just so I'm not wasting matches and I'm going to try and keep the burnt ends off the inside of this door for consistency although you won't be able to tell too much when you go back and paint it it helps cover up those tips but in some cases you'll be able to see them so you want to keep it kind of out of the way so I'm just going to go ahead and paint and do the bottom part of this and then I'll quickly show you how to to make the mail slot for our front door and I'll go into time lapse to finish up the rest of the door because mainly uh, well the inside of the frame I'll show you how to how to do these squares but pretty much the inside is just cutting to size and what you can do is when you, you can just lay the template down <clears throat> excuse me and just figure out kind of roughly where the, these matches will line up and then you would cut it's pretty simple pretty simple so we're going to do a middle section here again just lay that down to that top one and kind of go off that score this down you don't want to to lay the match down and press the uh, the exacto knife through <clears throat> and what that does is it's going to squish your match and uh, you have the possibility of fraying it it also happens when you cut it with scissors sometimes you'll have this little stuff sitting on the top you can just scrape that off um, scissors is just going to cut the match or crush it and fray the end up really badly and you want to avoid that because that makes the match pretty much useless so for a mail slot you're going to have uh, three matches in the center here and then the center match is the one we're going to be focusing on so we're going to take in roughly in the center of this we're going to score get a better grip on this score a nice line in here do a couple passes and then again on the other side do a couple passes and then we're going to just kind of scrape this down and carve it in there you want to be careful you don't cut over where your score line is because that defeats the purpose of the score line and that's just going to help you keep it squared it's a lot easier to score it first and then <clears throat> cut into the score than it is to try and square it up afterwards
gonna clean it up. And now you have your mail slot. As you can see here, you get a nice little cut into it. So when you have the matches next to it, bam. Looks like an awesome mail slot. Awesome. I know. And you'll just take and glue it in there referencing the template. Be roughly around there. As you can see here, it's kind of too short. You can just take and push the rest of that match in together. But it doesn't really matter, because like I said, it'll just look like the door's falling apart. Alright, so I'm going to go into time lapse for the rest of this center section here, this cross T. So this video is not going to be too long. Alright, so now that we have the intersection here put together, I'll show you how to build these things. And as you probably saw, I took a pretty nice chunk out of my knuckle there. So, uh, like I said, be careful. I, on the other hand, like to live on the wild side and pick up chicks with bandages. So, let's see here. We're going to need to take the right box of matches. You can just go ahead and see here is this going to be proper? Yeah, it'll just have some gaps in there. If you don't want gaps in between the squares on the inside here, what you do is you use <clears throat> two matches on the, on the sides here. And that <clears throat> takes up the rest of that space on the inside. So you get a closer fitting door and then when you have the gaps when you just use the one match you have nice uh, gaps on either side like this one and how we're going to do that is we're going to take these matches and we're just going to glue them to the paper Get them kind of even. I'm going to go one more. Now you're going to have to let these two dry. <clears throat> and when that's done, I'll be right back. Okay, I've let this dry, and I, I give it about an hour, maybe a little bit more than that to actually dry, because what's going to happen when you go to cut this is the paper's going to be wet, and it's just going to tear off the bottom. Well, it's just going to like, uh, it just slides off the bottom, and you really want that paper on there to kind of hold it together. Also, you really just want to make sure it's set, because I'm going to have to cut these. And when I go to cut them and it's not dry, they'll just fall apart. So basically all this paper is, is kind of like sticking tape to the back. And in, in a sense, it's kind of like homemade tape. Dry time is very important. So we're just going to take and we're going to figure out where this is going to sit in here. Again, like we did the rest of it. Score this up. And... Just like the rest of it, you're just going to pass the blade around. And I can feel that this isn't exactly all the way adhered together. Because they're kind of slipping apart. And as you can see there, this one got chunked out. So just be careful, but that'll be fine because I'm, I'm fixing to carve this up anyway. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and scrape the corners off these on all four sides. And what this is going to do is give it some kind of a it's going to give it a little bit of a design, but I don't like the I don't like the wood used for this match. That's the first match I've seen like that. Normally they're pretty good about having pretty good matches. It's more of a hard wood than the rest of these. It's harder wood than the rest. Just carve it down until you like it. But then you want to try and keep all four of them consistent as possible. And it's alright that this one kind of uh, messed up. Because, like I said, you're doing a rundown house and there's no real uh, screw-ups. Because it's just going to make the house look a little bit more muddled than it would have otherwise. So then you're just going to take and put some glue on here. If I can get this out, I left the lid open. So now it's all stopped up. Try to not leave the lid open. There we go. I ended up getting too much, but that'll be fine. Just pop that in there. And there you go. While it's still wet, you can take the tip of your blade. Kind of move it around in there to get it a little bit more even up if you want. I'm going to try and spread that glue around. And I'm pretty sure you can fit, let's see, three matches in here. If you wanted to have a little bit thicker of a door. And the reason we carve this here is, as you can see here with this one, if you leave these just plain, it, um, it just kind of blends in with the rest of the door. There's no real design to it. And without this yellow paint on here, you wouldn't really be able to distinguish any difference between these parts and this center part, and it'll just all run together. And whereas this top part here is carved. So just a heads up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this up in time lapse, because the rest of these parts are just going to be all the same. So, there you go. When I talk about imperfections, I'm talking about matches like this one. Um, I'm just, I'm really not happy to have gotten that particular match in the box, but you have to also consider the fact that Diamond isn't in the business of making art supplies, they're in the business of making matches, so you're going to have a few like this, but honestly that's the first match I've found like that in the two years or so I've been using matches for art projects, so that that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. Now, you're going to want to let this dry before you paint it. Alright, um, yeah, you're going to need, you're going to need a styrofoam plate or just any kind of template. Template, um, uh, I don't even know the word right now. Um, so, out of it, you're going to need something to put the paint on. Then you're going to need a black watercolor. Secret, secret word, watercolor. Um... And then I'm going to be using a flat, hard bristle brush. And then later, we're going to need a fine tip, soft bristle brush. So we got the, the oh, also, you're going to need a thing of dirty paint water. Doesn't have to be dirty paint water, clear or work. But I'm going to use dirty paint water because this is black. And, uh... The dirty is just gonna help dirty up my the wood. It's gonna help dirty up my wood. Funny stuff, I know. So the reason we're gonna be using watercolor instead of acrylic is this is going to soak into the wood, which is what we want because it's gonna act as a stainer to some degree. And the reason you're gonna want to put a lot of water in this, by the way, get it pretty pretty watered down. The reason we're using a hardwire brush is it's going to help tear up this wood 
and make it look old and tore up. Here comes my mom for her morning cup of coffee.